Hi everyone, welcome to the Chaos Theory Music Podcast live stream show. Hi, uh, hello. Uh, so uh, we're joined today, I'll introduce everyone properly, that was a big mess, that was my fault, so <laughs> that's a great start. So I'm Kanal from Chaos Theory, we're joined by Victoria, also from Chaos Theory, and uh, we've got some amazing musicians today, we've got Ora Brot, Coma Wall and Joe Quayle, so everyone say hello. 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 Um, I just want the viewers to know that I spent some time trying to work out a carefully timed, coordinated intro for everyone, <laughs> and that's messed that up completely. Uh, it doesn't matter. We have such a high caliber of musicians with us today that they'll more than make up for it. So, um, for anyone who's new to Chaos Theory, I just want to give you a little context. We've been organising concerts and festivals in London for ten years, since 2010, and we're now we are not willing to stop promoting interesting musicians from around the world so we're going to be doing it online for now so this is one of the ways in which we'll be doing it so we're joined by people from all over the world and uh so Oliver, where are you where are you at the moment we are in our church in in far up in scandinavia deep into the woods wow. <laughs> that's, that's very magical and uh coma wall where are you today we're in Whitney, the least cool kind of. Uh, I think it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> in all <Oxford. laughs> it's, Cameron sort of sullied it for the rest of us, really. It's on the end of the Cotswolds. It's really lovely. Oh, the Cotswolds, well. <laughs> you can have fields. Super classy. You can have all sorts. We're near Oxford, basically. Wow. We'll say Oxford because that's cooler. I think. Oh, that is slightly cooler. <laughs> well, there we are. And and hello, Joe. Hello. <laughs> So, uh, are you joining us from somewhere in London? Yeah, I'm. I, well, I'm in my home. Um, I'm in my music room, and it's in uh, uh, Plumstead, South East London. Oh, okay. Well, so um, we have for anyone joining us, we're going to have two videos uh, of each artist who've been basically who they've created and put a huge amount of effort into making these wonderful performance videos for us. Uh, and uh, we're going to see them throughout the show in different order. So we were going to start with Orobrot, who filmed this in, um, I think you'll pronounce the name of the church better than I would. Would one of you be able to tell us a bit about the videos that you made? Yeah, so we did a, a live uh, a show here in the, in the church at midsummer, at summer solstice. Um, and uh, it was actually, it was exactly at the time too. So up here in, in the north, in the, there's, it's very light. So, I mean, it's, it's like daylight in the middle of the night. So I think we started around midnight, but you'll see in the video that there's, it's pretty bright outside still, but then eventually the sun kind of disappears a little while deeper, the, we go into the footage and then before it actually comes back out again. So yeah, so we did a night session exactly at the time of summer solstice this summer. And why did you choose to do it on the midsummer? Well, it's a magical date, isn't it? It is a magical date. Um, all right, well, uh, I'll tell you what, why don't we play the video and then uh, we'll see if anyone has any questions for us and uh, I'm sure we'll have a few ourselves. Uh, so, We've got Emily Bailey visuals powering this entire show, uh, assisted by Jose Ramon Camarnia. So Emily, if you're able to play Order Rock's first video, that'll be amazing.
Depression set, yeah, yeah. That's what we call it, yeah, the neo depression. Uh, yes. And uh, and we haven't, uh, yeah, we've never done this live at all, actually. But it, it's been there since the start, in a way, like lurking in the background. This kind of <clears throat> this this setup, I guess, and this kind of this uh, version of the band. But yeah, finally, we got a got an excuse to to do it. I'd like to well, you had a comment on uh, it was a brilliant setup. Uh, we had a comment on YouTube saying, "I'm loving these versions of Border Brot songs. Hope they might make an EP in this style one day." And uh, sounds and looks amazing. And uh, yes, we've had some love from France and from Scandinavia, mm -hmm. Victoria. Yep. Thank you. What were the people saying from Scandinavia? Um, they were saying, "Let me see." So fantastic thing to see that's love again. So. Uh, incredible to see uh, this love again. Someone. Great. Thank Lovely. you. Thank you. So, Victoria, you had some questions about uh, order block setup, but um, yeah, I was... about the the, layout and the design, the set design. <laughs> Yeah, I was quite interested in the set design, obviously choosing um, the longest, um, the mid mid to play during midsummer. Did you have any thoughts about that? Because you said you did it yourself, design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's, it, it's a very important day here in Scandinavia, the, the midsummer. And uh, I guess, uh, yeah, and, and, uh, and it just feels like a magical date, really. And uh, we wanted to do it on, on, uh, on a, you know, just to make it more special. Normally, there's a, a a big party in the village where we live, where thousands of people, because uh, it's a really small village, so thousands of people make a, a huge difference. And we normally have a, a big party at the church, but since we couldn't do it uh, this year, we decided to do something else. Yeah, and uh, and also I would I would want to mention that because we live near the woods, and for these past ten years I've. It, we, you know, when you walk in the woods, or I've been running through in the woods, and we found these skulls. So the, all of these, all of the heads you see there, are actually they're placed on the floor. In a the circle. ones, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're kind all of, found. You, you found them all in the woods. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, yes. So I, I kind of, uh, you know, so you know, like all of a sudden I would come back home before dinner, and I'm like, whoa, look what I found, and it's like a gigantic. <laughs> Skull. 
<laughs> Shirdil is coming home. It's like, I found six skulls in the wood today. It's like, he's got some weird radar for skulls. <laughs> so what you see on the floor oh, is cool. actually like a, it's like a, um, what do you say, daisy chain? Out of like the ones that you wear on your head. Yeah, at, flower, at flower wreath. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, flower wreath. So that's like made of flowers and skulls. It's mm. basically the kind yeah. of decoration. It's kind of like the film Midsummer, I guess, in a way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Fantastic. So we should be maybe a bit terrified or not. I don't know. They just, <laughs> I mean, be wary if they invite you over, Joe. <laughs> it's all <laughs> well, good. I know them well. It's okay. So, <laughs> so um, you got a lot of angles there. It looks like a really professionally shot video. And I think you said you did it on a couple of iPhones. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those new uh, iPhones are fantastic. So it's two. <laughs> It's two iPhones, what are they called? Number 10? Well, it's one of those, the pro ones, I guess, the latest version. So they're really good. So we had a, a camera team here and we had, uh, we had them filming with these from, yeah, from, from the galleries and then down on the floor. And I mean, it's like, it's, it's totally pro, so yeah. It's, it's uh, this um, cinematographer that we always use with that done a lot of videos for me and for Arabat as well. And who also, by the way, painted that painting. It's called uh, Ole Lundin, oh. the Swedish guy from okay. Stockholm, which is amazing. So he's, he's been really uh, generous with his, um, with his filming for us. He's really cool. Oh, well done, well done, Ole. And um, I believe you got a friend of ours to edit it as well. Oh yeah, Chris Purdy, yeah? Chris Purdy, uh, known as Riff Underground to mm -hmm. people who are fans of noise and heavy music and filmmaking. So Thank you I very much. Nice to give him a mention. Yeah. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Ulla, and thanks to Aurobrot for that. That was incredible. And so, let, um, not lo let's mention Yulina Nas also, because she did the camera too. So she deserves a mention as well. They all work very well. Okay, hard. okay. And Yolina is the one who provided the photos we used to promote this as well. Exactly. Right? Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. All right. Full picture now. So you've got a good bunch of creative people behind you. So um, I, uh, we've got a few other guests here, everyone. So we're gonna we're gonna see some videos by uh, Coma Wall and Joe Quayle. Now, Chaos Theory fans, if you're familiar with Chaos Theory concerts, you're probably familiar with Joe Quayle's music. And I, as a fan, keep coming back to you, Joe, because you're not one of those fans I'm a huge fan of who I'm like, wow, I love them, but I've been hearing this same set for five years, so I'll wait until they've got something new for me. Because uh, every single time, you'll try something new and challenge yourself. And I believe <laughs> you've done that with these sets as well. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, so would you want to tell us what you decided to do for this, for this show? For this um, show? Well, uh, I, I'm guessing that you're going to play the bark first, probably, but... Okay, so uh, basically I wanted uh, to give you uh, a, a picture of what I was doing in lockdown, basically. And one of the things I was doing is I went back to the fifth suite, the C minor suite, um, because I have uh, a lot of challenges <laughs> that I need to meet in this suite. And uh, I would just, I wanted to see if I could do it, basically. Uh, and I couldn't do all of it, but I could do some of it. And the aim was not to be perfect, but not to be terrible. So that's what I hope I've managed to, to present. And you know, every day you change how you feel about the music. Um, but because normally well, I go I, with I, loops. I believe we, uh, we got a video of you uh, like several months ago for this. And yes, but, like, but don't use that. Don't no, use that. because like, I, changed, uh, I changed my mind. You know, I changed yeah. my mind. That one, the courant was, oh, it was quite quite uh, stately and impassioned and uh, I decided I don't feel the current this this way now even though it could have been okay. but you know so stuff like that, uh, that and, and and I can't I don't have the fallback of my electric and all my beautiful sounds that I make and I don't have the fallback of a stage you know so I just wanted to see if I could do it basically <laughs> So this is a piece you. I, I thought you were already familiar with playing this piece. When yeah, you, no, um, I've been I've uh, been learning it since the dawn of time. But um, okay. you never. All that happens is you spend the time you spend 
doubles for half the amount that you improve. So it's very easy to get from nothing to reasonable. And then it's years and years and years and years and years. <laughs> and you get tiny wow. little bit better, a little bit more secure, a little bit less out of tune on the same shift every time, you know, this type of thing. So, you know, it was, okay. it, that's what I spent yeah. when I was unable to write or do anything else. That's what I did was this missile like uh, wrong word, microsco microscopic uh, work, you know. Now, I thought it would be very, very simple for somebody who's used to using a lot of pedals and loops and um, equipment to record and film something acoustically would be quite simple. <laughs> and the feedback I was getting from you over the summer was quite the opposite. So oh. um, I've obviously not educated enough about it to know why that would be the case. Uh, but why uh, would it? Why was it so much harder? Well, because uh, because I'm very inexperienced in recording acoustically. So normally if I would record uh, for, for an artist, you know, uh, then I would go to a studio and have a producer and they'd set up some fancy, you know, stereo pencil mics or whatever. I've got one mm -hmm. microphone and a small room and uh, 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 a lot of noise at home, you know, so to, to get a good recording uh, and to, to get it to get it clear and to get it so that it, it somehow feels as exciting as it does when you're playing it and you don't lose that you know that that's mm. it's very hard then uh with with the videos um you know for, because i can just have one angle and so it was propped up <coughs> on on the keys on the piano and i know which three keys the legs have to stand on in order to get the right angle <laughs> the cello <laughs> i learned a lot Colonel. you know so wow. thank you for this challenge really it was cool. Well, it's not like you've stopped. You haven't really stopped. It, it, as far as I'm aware, from the outside, it just looks like Joe Quayle has continued to constantly promote, create. You released uh, The Paradox Cairn. You released yes. um, Malakoda by yes. a cover of that, yes. of Caspians. And uh, you created a wonderful, wonderful fan piece at the very beginning of lockdown. You asked all of your fans from around the world to send you a three-second clip. Yeah. And you've weaved it together. Yes. So, um, I mean, you've got a lot coming out and surprising us with, uh, <laughs> would you say any of those experiences was particularly uh, cathartic or uh, uh, helpful uh, yeah. to cope with uh, everything that's been happening this year? Without without a shadow of a doubt, the, uh, what I am so proud of is the collaborative piece, the, the Paradox Ken. And as you say, I mean, that was, um, I forget the exact numbers now, but there was 124 people, I think, sent 167 samples from 24 countries across the world, right? All of these, some of them came on uh, very, very nice recording. Some of them came, um, you know, at the back with a video where they're out in the park and, and they hear a nice sound. Anyway, they sent them all. And I, I tidied them up. I made them all into WAVs. And then I made this, this nine minute piece of music when Dorian Robinson made a video with all photographs that people had also sent in from at, at the time their lockdown walks and things like this. And we have this document, if you like, of this period of time where I didn't play a note in this piece, but happily these samples, some of them just seemed to go together or it was able to have find some kind of harmonic structure. Uh, within it or there was, a, there was a massive beat that that my friend uh, Corin sent who, who's a great uh, uh, producer and this had to be the ending this euphoric four four you know stuff like this uh, and the piece just I had all these samples and it just it, I shaped it you know and and it this was very special great great privilege to do this yeah well um it was magnificent. So uh, you sang, right, well, you sang was... in it. <laughs> you were brilliant. Uh, briefly, yeah. Your uh, note was lovely. I, was quite... <laughs> I really liked um, the fact that you displayed the names of uh, the people who were providing each sample as it was played. So yeah. that's it's quite actually... moving, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It, it was beautiful, and it actually reminded me of a few people I hadn't spoken to in a few years. And I was like, oh my god, Good. they did it, and uh, it was an ex excuse to reconnect with them as well. So that was a yeah. nice little. Uh, you know, we had, I'll tell you very briefly, we had a very nice thing. We had, I think our youngest singer was, uh, I think she was six or seven, and our eldest oh, was wow. over 70. And they both independently sang the same note two octaves apart. And oh, there's a point wow. in the piece where they're there, the two of them with their notes, you know, and it's so beautiful. Wow. Lot of magic happened in this piece. So, so uh, I think everyone should check out the uh, Bandcamp links that we put in the information on the YouTube channel below it and you are going to be able to
support all of the artists and re uh, basically just listen through everything we're talking about now for reference um i just want to bring up that because this is a free show um obviously we're all really really loving doing this but if you can donate anything uh we're not asking for donations necessarily you can spend money on uh, the merch and music by all of these artists on the link we provide below you can also buy merch from chaos theory on our Bandcamp. and if you don't really want to get any more merch uh, from us you can uh, donate as little as two pounds via the link on dice as well so all of that's there now for anyone i should mention anyone who's ordered our merch lately um in the last few weeks i'm a little bit injured and so I haven't wrap, been able to wrap up and pack and post all of your merch deliveries. And that's why it's been so delayed. But I am very grateful for all of your support. And I will send you a little extra something to make up for the delay. So, um, Emily, I think it's a really great time to listen to and watch Joe performing Bach. The current, the current version of <laughs> before she changes her mind. So, all right, so we're, gonna, we're going to, before you improve it uh, tomorrow, so we're going to enjoy the current version of Joe Quayle and Bart. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> wow. Stunning. That's that great. Incredible. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. Well done, Joe. And that is that is that good enough for you today? Now that you've yeah, you're feeling I, reassured I, with the reaction. Yeah, I, I, yes, I, I know what needs to be tightened. But you know, as I said, thank you for for giving me the chance to do this. Actually, because I wouldn't have done it otherwise. <laughs> well, there are a lot of people who are appreciating it. You've got Joanna Vale saying, "Beautiful." Sounds like you've mastered the Bach piece, Joe. <laughs> and. Uh, Andrew Marshall with Bach is a genius and a total flying to play. Great job, Joe. <laughs> That's kind. And uh, yeah, and a lot of lot of love in general. A lot of people are loving the acoustic set. Um, okay. I don't. I have heard you play acoustic cello in a few of the yes. concerts, but not for an entire concert, just no. um, part of them. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I mean, I know. Well, actually, you know what, Victoria? How did you discover Joe Quayle? Oh, that was a strange one. It's via a friend of mine in Australia. We volunteered at the same radio station in Melbourne called PBS. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so Chris Pearson, who has the Pajama People show, he introduced me to you. Which oh, is a strange way around. That's, a, that's yeah. amazing. He's a lovely man. Lovely. Yeah, Hello, Chris, to... if you're watching. <laughs> yeah, sure he is. <laughs> that's really uh... great. That's uh, great. And uh, you've got some, a lot of people asking about your cello itself. How old is your cello? Another person has said, this isn't a cello, this is a time machine. You transported us a few centuries back. Thank you. Oh, bless. Um, what nice thing to say. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, well, uh, my cello is, uh, he, he is 200. Uh, he, was, he was made in 1820. So, uh, and he's uh, an English cello, Ferber, made by William Ferber. Uh, and I, I, as soon as I met this cello, uh, we fell in love, you know, it was, it was a good story. <laughs> so he's, he's very, uh, very strong, very powerful cello, but also he can be very, very graceful. Uh, hit, but you can reach the back of a hall if you need to, you know, it's that kind of instrument. So I, I love, I love him very much. <laughs> oh, well, it shows that uh, you're really getting into it as always. It's a pleasure to watch and a pleasure to hear. So thanks for Thank you. What must have been a huge amount of effort over the <laughs> summer whilst releasing and working on all these other things that keep coming out that I have no idea about, and it's amazing. So, uh, yeah, Thank really you. appreciate that. And again, for anyone who isn't familiar with Joe Quayle, you will get a different experience literally every time you go and see her. I, I will go to any show in London, and it'll be something new for me as a Longing 50 fan, and something amazing for anyone who's a first-timer. So it was special and you always make it special by challenging yourself so thank you joe thank you so um yeah so speaking of people going showing us different sides of themselves we're gonna <laughs> jump over to you taz and hell of coma wall um i've seen you in a few bands but the one i've been watching the most is under smile <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. so a lot of people know you from that project so is coma wall a really recent development have you just come up with this no, <laughs> no. Coma Wall's um, very old now. Coma Wall's like from 2006. Yeah, when we first oh. met in 2000. Oh. So we, uh, <laughs> Hell moved into the block of flats where I lived and um, we both discovered that we played guitar and we started to play acoustic things together on my kitchen floor normally with acoustic guitars <laughs> and discovered a mutual love for all the 90s kind of uh, acts, particularly things like Babes in Toyland and Hall and Nirvana and Screaming Trees and things like that. And we would sit on my floor for many hours and kind of just play together. And that's where it comes from, really. So it's not new. So, so <laughs> Wall, was that your first? Was that the first thing you did then? Was that, that earlier yeah, than Under Smile? Earlier than anything, than yeah. Under Smile. Sure. And then basically, wow. basically did nothing with that <laughs> until now. <laughs> uh, until now. That's the end. Now's the time. All the the end of the story. Say. Under Smile came along and took uh, precedent, I suppose. Yeah. And we were always like, oh, let's just, we need to do Under Smile. We need to do Under Smile. And we just were sidetracked constantly by, you know, we we have so many songs that by, um, it wasn't even Coma Wall, was it back then? It was. No, our first acoustic it band was Skylar. Was Skylar. And then Ursa and then Minor, Ursa Minor. Mm -hmm. hence the Ursa hence. Minor EP. Victoria, yes. Victoria has been educating me about this over the last few days, and she's been 
geeking up on YouTube so much, and she's been educating me about, oh, that's actually, that's a minor, and Skyler, and <laughs> so you're, you're quite a fan. So actually, you know what, Victoria, have you got any questions to date this on? Because you're definitely, you've been burning up a lot. Yeah, I'm interested in the, the songs that obviously you've hung on to these songs since 2006 um, in the Ursa Minor format and uh, now you decided to release it. Um, how's, how come now? And those particular songs as well. I think it was just because we were always doing Under Smile and mm. we have got this thing where we're both like heavy, filthy, dirty <laughs> bands. I don't know why <laughs> we just do, but really we have this... Yeah. you know lighter side as well it's not mm. is it lighter it's not, even although it's per se, it's it's lighter. well acoustic but quite dark anyway yeah. and listening to the ep it's um it's acoustic nightmare almost it's, yeah, I, sure. I, I love that's it it's amazing. absolutely well, thank yeah. you. Thank dark you. noir that's no, fantastic the time that we wrote it hmm. uh it was a it was a dark time we were both in very dark places very dark. Mm. yeah and mm. i think i guess that shows in the lyrics and the the songs mm -hmm. um and the smile came along and it definitely took precedent and we started to get more gig offers and things and so we demoed these in 2012 but then that was around the time that under smile started getting kind of bigger yeah. offers and things like that and mm. we never did anything with it and, and also we'd forgotten that we'd even done them <laughs> until <laughs> came along. oh yeah sorry oh. no we had uh, we, we, we knew they were there um Tom, yeah, then Tom's quite good at keeping records and he, he looks at our everything. Yeah. And then all this whole COVID thing, it's like, what what do you do? We can't, we want to go into this. We just started to work on a new Under Smile album yeah. and we're going into mm -hmm. the studio and we're like, yes, just me and Taz, because <laughs> we kind of do all the stuff first and then we share it with the, the boys later. So, is it okay to say boys? I think, I think men. it's fine. We can say what we want about them, it's just them, they can't say They can't say anything really, can they? <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, Chaos Theory, the Chaos Fest um, 10 years of Chaos 10 ended up being our first and last gig of the year. <laughs> like, come on! <laughs> we were so... The year's not over yet. We were very enthused and we were kind of ready for a year of writing, recording and playing shows. And then I guess the only thing that was left to do in our kind of isolated two family kind of uh, distant isolation was that to look back at what we'd done. And I guess we found this, and <clears throat> yeah, I hope that answers the question because we're a bit. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> we found them, and then we thought, let's do it, and then yeah. we did. And we so oh, in nice. in isolation, we have edited them, mixed and mastered with the help of our friend Joe Proud Love, mm -hmm. and we have recorded the live versions that you're going to see. Yes. Um, you, when did you record them? Uh, was it this summer. This summer, yes, on the hottest day of the year, I think. Oh my on god, the hottest day of the year. Was that also a deliberate choice? Like, uh, no. honor got it with that. No, if you I, know, yeah. we were so angry, <laughs> we, we, didn't, we didn't say to each other we were angry, but I was fuming. I was fuming, <laughs> and I kept making so many mistakes. It took a long time. <laughs> Get there, didn't you? and there was a bee in the room as well. It just like you know, we just oh, no. get, and the bees like, <laughs> why is that always a bee? It happens to us quite often. <laughs> you know, studios as well. It's so beautiful there, and we've we've been uh, with Arthur. Before, we've recorded, we? um, in fact, the Undersmile version uh, side of the Coma Wall Undersmile EP back in 2013 was recorded at the same studio, and also some draw stuff that I did was recorded there too. So Arthur is like an old friend of ours. It's difficult though because you need to have the windows open, but you can't stop the bees coming in. <laughs> or wasps. I don't mind bees. But wasps. <laughs> I don't like wasps. There was a lot of wasps. And they were coming in and no one's asked about the wasps. I was freaking out. I was like, almost oh, there. Wasps are just a bit meaner, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What... I find them a bit, yeah. And it was how many degrees was it that day? Thirty something. Thirty six or, or thirty seven, honestly. It was hot. It was horrendous. I was I was working outside that entire day. I remember that day. It was a great day, but I wasn't inside a studio with a bee. <laughs> with glass I'll say, panels. I'll say wasp because I don't mind. Oh. And it sounds mean if I say but wasp. Yeah, bees are all right. They're kind of like they're fuzzy and they're nice. They're indiscriminate. But basically, so um, it might it might be um, of interest to people who are wanting to follow up on your music to know that you have 
uh, an EP out named after the original name of the band, I presume. So that's Eartha Minor. And you released that, uh, was it 28th of August? On Bandcamp? Or oh, it's out now anyway, it doesn't matter when, even if I got it wrong, it's still out now. So, uh, yeah, so just find Coma Wall on Bandcamp. I'll click on the link at the bottom and you can check out the EP. You, um, you've you uh, filmed all three songs, but I believe you've streamed one of them elsewhere already. And where, where can people check that one out? On YouTube, essentially, yeah. So we filmed them ourselves in, in sort of semi relaxed lockdown conditions. It wasn't full on isolation, but it was. It was lo fi. It was lo fi. We'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we had to film ourselves, I guess. Yeah, probably not as polished as we would, uh, we and would normally this, do. And this, in this instance, we did everything ourselves. Normally we have help, but this time we didn't because for various, there were things that went wrong. Um, and timings and things like that. So we yeah. did everything with our own phones, um, but there wasn't anyone behind said phones <laughs> to be like, that, that's probably not quite right, or that is, or whatever it be. So, so we've made do, basically. We've made do. One of the cameras was um, not right, let's say. <laughs> um, so, Ollie and, and Tom have worked very hard. Ollie and Tom have to done a hell of a lot for us where we were just basically enraged behind the guitars. It's not in the kind of, yeah. <laughs> we're always <laughs> enraged behind we're the lucky guitars. that it turned out how it did because it, it, the conditions were dreadful. Dreadful. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm trauma. You did a very good job not, considering. Not let go of this. Yeah, listening oh. back to it, it sounds absolutely fantastic. So I think you did so really, much. really well, <laughs> despite the conditions. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, Bill R.D., Nonetheless, says I saw Under Smile once and was transfixed, excited for Coma Wall. Oh, so, um, so why don't we why don't we see what the results were of this horrible, okay. sweaty, steaming <laughs> <laughs> day? Sweaty <laughs> area, <laughs> yeah. Great. So, Emily, whenever you're ready, we'd love to see a video by Coma Wall. Thank you.
Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Thank great. you very much. Very much. That's incredible. Well yeah. done. So, yeah, that was really, really Beautiful. special. So, um, yeah, so I had um, a question about your writing and, and Lindsay Richardson, we know Lindsay Richardson. Yeah, she's at every gig, she's one every gig artist. We love Lindsay. So she's asked a similar question, so I'm gonna try and weave them into one. So I was gonna ask, uh, do you, all right, so what, what, actually what Lindsay's asked is, when you write for Comb Wall and Undersmile, do you know which project the song will be for? Or do you write the song first then place it? So that's, that's her question. <laughs> I think we do normally write the song and then place it, but then, I, yeah, I don't think, if we write on an acoustic, generally we're thinking, oh, this will probably be for Coma Wall or... I, I do it the other way around. Do you? Yeah. So, oh, so they go. I write everything <laughs> on a Spanish classical. And then decide what it's for. Um, that's what all of... The last two under my albums were on. Yeah. And um but but I do it the other way. Around, so acoustic. I tend to play electric for electric right? Do you? Yeah, yeah. I just I don't have like an amp I can plug into here. That's probably why. I don't have options. So this will give you an insight to our <laughs> writing process, which is basically that we write 50-50. Um uh, I write half the songs, how writes the other half but we come together very early to kind of collaborate on each other's pieces. So we will start by saying, oh, I've got a new song, come over and we'll kind of work on it. And so they're collaborative all the time, even though one of us has probably come up with the idea. Mm. They only really take kind of shape when it's both of us. Um, and I guess right. we can tell, generally we're writing for Under Smile. Yeah, I think unless we just say, shall we write some more comb wall but then again to be fair we have so much comb wall material it's old that there's no point writing more because we <laughs> we need to plow through all of this material we've there, got a lot of years worth of acoustic music to, yeah. to be honest there's probably three albums worth at wow. least and that sounds preposterous <laughs> Why would we write more? But then we did write more, of course. Oh, yeah. We're in. <laughs> Shall we just, like, let's write more Coma Wall. Hello, why would you do that? Coma <laughs> Wall, we normally anyway. kind of reach a peak of writing and then something comes along like an offer for Under Smile. And we're like, scrap everything yes. we've done for the last however long and let's just go for that. It's like, oh, a shiny, a rhinestone. <laughs> let's yeah. go there. So that's why this <laughs> well, have allowed ourselves to go to look back yeah we, we never look back but this time we've allowed ourselves to kind we've of never been disciplined <laughs> we were on the last under smile album but That's prior to that one. we've never <sighs> been disciplined and now we're going to be disciplined so we've given now ourselves we're now we're going to be disciplined we're trying. so now can we're... i ask how did you end up in 2015 if come was such an old side project that you just happened to have old songs for how did you end up playing in roadburn festival Oh, okay. So I guess that we had played some, we had played some Under Smile Unplugged, as we called it back then. Um, right. shows, and one of them was with Dylan Carlson at the Black Heart. I guess that was we, that not his first ever solo show, by the way. I think so. It was so much fun. We loved it. We he's we, such a lovely person. Yeah. So we played Desert Fest, I think, as Coma Wall, and we played Dylan Carlson's show as Coma Wall, or maybe as Under Smile Unplugged at that time. Um, and I guess maybe the Roadburn guys heard it. They were thinking of, I guess, thinking of booking Walter under smile some anyway. Of, some of our staff. We were lucky. In that we were so respect. lucky. Like we so. are eternally grateful to be asked to play as under smile and co all the same, the same year. Yeah. Um, so that yeah. was absolutely an incredible experience. Apart from when. <laughs> well, <laughs> we played Coma Wall first. And then we played Under Smile, and just as we were going onto the stage, <laughs> the band before, which were called Black Anvil, I believe, had a, a real, I think it was a, well, it must have been real, a pig's head, and there was <laughs> blood all over the stage, and it absolutely <laughs> was the most vile thing I've ever, not just seen, but like you could smell it, you could feel it in your bones. And we were <laughs> all trying not to be physically sick. Oh, man. Honestly, Honestly, quite right. I'm like, we're here, we're a road bird. Oh, 
There's blood. Oh, There's no, blood. Blood. I'm not caring what that's saying. It was really mixed emotions, wasn't it? I enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy the blood. Oh, Being I think a... we cleaned up, we enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Um, it was really <laughs> nice. <laughs> anyway, sorry about well, that. Get... <laughs> there were other things. <laughs> there were... Yeah. With Carry me. on, please. <laughs> please just ignore us. It's fine. It's all fine. Blood's fine, you know. Blood happens, doesn't it? I don't mind blood. Blood does happen. happen. I like blood. I've heard about it. But um, yeah, despite the blood, everyone's loving it. Torpor, Torpor are commenting. Uh, another absolutely thunderous band. And uh, that was fantastic, especially the use of synthesizer in the Coma Wall set. Love the vibe. More Coma Wall, please. Um, uh, we love them. They're so amazing. They are. They're great bands. And, oh, and someone who is already a Joe Quayle fan, I've got more to love about Joe Quayle's music, and I've got two new bands to look up now. So uh, there we are. You're already making an impression. Well, we've been so, um, collaborate with Joe as well, which was like incredible on our last Under Smile album. Yeah. That was great fun, yeah. hey? <laughs> Kurt we Joe. just oh. adored it. It just totally the it set everything we wanted, like the cherry on the cake, so to speak. Oh, oh great! Promo wall, Joe. We'll have to get you back because me and Helen <laughs> like hear cello lines when we're playing the songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great, <laughs> great. And um, I've been hearing a lot about Coma Wall from Alan Pride, oh, who's oh, a big Alan. part of. Mm -hmm. The scene. I was gonna say a big part of chaos theory, a big part of managing this band, that band, a big part of the, the musical music scene in general. And uh, he's been pushing you guys for years. Yeah. And so I'm really, really glad I finally got to hear it. I'm oh. glad this EP came out. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are pretty happy to hear that you've got so many albums worth of material recorded. So there's very little excuse not to release it, is there? Oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah we need to do some hard work. Yeah. <laughs> we are actually starting. I think we're starting tomorrow, aren't we? Yes. Oh well. To be fair, we have started, you know, within lockdown and alongside it. Yes, we have. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're we'll starting we'll. extra hard tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> and I. That's brilliant. I loved um, what Arab Rock were playing earlier as well. Uh, when we met them at Chaos Fest, they were just brilliant. So I just wanted to mention that too. We love. Thank you. Oh, Joe, well, if you ever need some pump organ, you oh, know where we are. <laughs> Very far away, but we're. <laughs> Can we all get together? <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. Yeah. Super group, come on. No, it's gonna happen. <laughs> oh my lord, that'll be amazing. Beautiful. And with you guys as well, like the twelve string, twelve string guitar, stunning. Absolutely <laughs> love. Like. And, and we love and the organ. acoustics yeah. in that <laughs> room and the organ too. You can't really ask for more. No. <laughs> she, still, she still didn't actually have a, a, an acoustic guitar for this uh, session, so he had to get one. And then he was like, now I need to learn how to play this thing if we're going to. So it was, yeah, a I, bit I, of a, it was a bit of a process. <laughs> didn't find it in the woods or make one out of a skull or anything like that then. Yeah. <laughs> 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 guitar, out of interest. What was the question? What gauge, what gauge string do you have? Oh, I think, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know, there's so many of them. There's like, uh, it's up to 60. I've played probably two or three, I say play loosely. But they, they've killed my fingers immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, because you get all of this stuff. Uh, it's I think it's it's 12, 12 to 60 something. It's uh, far too much for me. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. but... That, <laughs> Maybe I could do it. it. It depends on how many chords you play. I just play one chord, so that makes it easier. Yeah, yeah. we can get on board with that, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So did, well, hold a chord for like three minutes. Yeah, yeah. So Joe, did you hear that? So in the <laughs> one chord, that's it makes it a lot easier in it's a way. The right chord at the right time. That's all you need. <laughs> it's always in C. One chord and Perfect. all the songs are in the same key. It's yeah, perfect. yeah. So it works. Oh, that's it all almost, you need. <laughs> it almost works with your Bach then. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Well, this, we're getting a lot of excitement about, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, magic happening here already and um, some people are saying collaborate and the collaboration with you, you guys would be amazing. So, I mean, that would be pretty stunning, wouldn't it? <laughs> It'd be fun. It would. Very stylish, as we were discussing earlier. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, since we've been speaking so much about um, Orderbrot's um, 
set up. For anyone who's just joining us halfway, this would be a great time to show the second half of Audubon set. So um, why don't we hear that? Let's go. Cinnamon, where you gonna run to? Cinnamon, where you gonna run to? Cinnamon, where you gonna run to? All on that day, well I run to the rock. Please hide me, I run to the rock. Please hide me, I run to the rock. Please hide me, all on that day. But the rock cried out, 
Ain't gonna hide you, the rock cried out. Ain't gonna hide you, the rock cried out. Ain't gonna hide you all on that day. Said rock, what's the matter with your rock? Can't you see you need your rock? Lord, 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 all on that day. So I ran to the river. It was bleeding, I ran to the sea. It was bleeding, I ran to the sea. It was bleeding all on that day. So I ran to the river. It was boiling, I ran to the sea. So cool. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm a huge fan of those songs anyway. And just so I love those versions of them. It's, it's an amazing thing you've done. The Neo Depression has brought something wonderful out of you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was fun to do. I, I was thinking I paid £30 for that pump organ as well. So it's really it's oh. good use. Yeah. yeah. Around here, people have uh, all of the house, you know, every house has one of those so they they tend to just give them away or just for some random amount of money why doesn't that happen 
I've been trying to buy similar things from India for years, and they're just even those are not worth the money when it comes to traveling with them. So I'm going to have to get to Scandinavia. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I oh, should fill yeah. up the whole church with pump organs. In a... <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll buy one can... and ship it back. Yes, I'm. Yes, let's yeah. do it. That's got to be cheaper than from India. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Wow. So, um, with these uh, versions of the songs that you've, that I, I as an Arab rock fan, Arab rock fan, know and love, um, was this a deliberate attempt to create a different experience with it, or was it just literally a similar scenario as some of the other musicians, which is this is what we have available, this is what we're going to do with it, or what was the plan there? I guess it's a mix. It seems like the songs have been kind of like this for a long time, but you just couldn't hear it in all of the noise. <laughs> you know? So um, it feels really natural to do it this way. Uh, yeah. Kind of maybe, yeah. It, it, I've, we've done it for quite some time, but we've never had the opportunity to, find, you know, kind of present it and uh so thank you corona times yeah when we met like mm -hmm. 11 years ago uh, we lived in an, an apartment and then we would didn't have you know then we used to rehearse at home when we weren't in the rehearsal space so then, then we just you know played the songs on maybe i had my little korg ms20 on my lap or something or i had a piano and we we just played like you know different songs but we never actually performed with this but it's you know we've been playing like this at home just for fun but actually not like yeah. thinking of presenting it in in an acoustic way like this but it it worked yeah. out quite well so you'll you, yeah so expect more of the aura brot neo depression good yeah. version good. Uh, beautiful. Do you, uh, I think this is the direction we'll be seeing you go in general. Like, are we going to lose the punky raw side of Order Brot that is what I grew, uh, how I discovered you? No, 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 no. There's there's more coming of the noise and hollering. Okay. <laughs> Many sides to Arab yeah, yeah. You haven't quite seen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. great. There's more, to, there's more to feel back. So, um, yeah, a lot of people are loving it as well. You're getting loads of love here. Fantastic Arabrot. Love the Neo Depression set so much. Wow, thank you. New Arabrot. Nice Arabrot. Great tune, that. And, uh, yeah, loving the acoustic Arabrot and so on and so forth. Nice. People generally are loving it. So, um, yeah, that's uh, phenomenal. And it was really nice that you did show two sides of what you did with two sets at um, the festival that we had in February, the Chaos Theory Festival, because it uh, did capture different different friends of mine were telling me, were explaining to me very logically why one set was better than the other. And they obviously had different preferences. So I love it when people do that. So uh, yeah, it was just, um, you've captured different people in that way and obviously developed yourself a bit. Um, I really liked seeing you in a punk gig, in Cosmic Carnage gigs, which is how I discovered you in the windmill. That was, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was just filled. But I love seeing you in the grandiose settings as well. You've played Cosmic Carnage, haven't you, uh, Coma War? But we not have, Alcoa. For sure. Yeah. I, I love Great Rich. Venue. Let's let's just give yeah. some Rich. You Rich know, Collins of Cosmic Carnage. Big shout out. And those chaos theory Sorry? gigs, those chaos theory gigs that we did was also the last, the very last gig that we did. The probably the Ooh. first as well. And the last that we did this year. So it was um exclusive was, 2020 shows, those yeah, two. Very <laughs> it was well, I'm very honoured and I, again, I'm just completely, I mean, the time, it's, it's too much to unpack in my mind, the timing of it and if it had just been two weeks later or something like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just really, really happy we got that in and it was a good one to end on for a while. Uh, I want to use this opportunity just to uh, anyone who is joining us halfway through and uh, wants to know what we're all talking about. Uh, Chaos Theory is actually a music promotion. We focus on live music over the last 10 years. Um, not that I don't love listening to records and things, labels and do amazing work. It's just that I always discover my favorite artists and connect with people in the crowd when I'm in the room with them. And I usually discover acts because I'm there to see one other act and then I'll discover something else on the lineup. And it's just a really great way for, to connect with people and the musicians. So that's where we have focused. And obviously this year we're going to be continuing on trying to find ways to promote interesting musicians to everyone around the world. We're going to try and take it more global with the internet and um, we're going to 
find a way of merging the live experience with what we have to deal with and the restrictions available now and over the next few years you'll see us coming back to live concerts predominantly but maybe we'll add an element of being able to introduce people from around the world uh, with each other with this so if you want to support what we're doing in the information in the description below on youtube there are some links there to support us on bandcamp and buy our merch and there's a donation link via dice um and we do intend to have we've got a list of a lot of equipment we're going to get to improve the standards of these shows and what we're able to deliver for artists and for you music fans out there so all of your donations and uh, merch is very very helpful and very very grateful and obviously you do need to buy more music by these artists you must be already frantically clicking at their links right now so the links are all there please buy their music support them i'd recommend that you know as a guide if whatever you think you might spend on a ticket that's a great amount to start with to spread between the artists and us and everyone you want to help out and also i want to thank who hasn't got a uh, a link to buy anything from but emily bailey who is a vision mixer a visual artist an artist and uh, an all-around great human being who's doing the job of about five or six people right now and just bringing this show and broadcasting it to the world and she's got jose ramon Camano also assisting so thank you to jose you're all wonderful people. So, thank uh, you so much Thank you. So Lovely. with that, um, yeah, I guess uh, we've only got a couple of videos left. It's, really, it's actually quite it's flown by, hasn't it? Um, so, uh, yeah, I think uh, we've got more Coma Wall. Um, Victoria has been researching you heavily and has sat down and gave me a list of facts about you that I didn't realise. So you've also played, yeah, basically bands you played with and things like that. But Victoria, <laughs> what else have we not mentioned about Coma Wall? Um... <clears throat> I was thinking about the name of Ursa Minor, actually, where you, where you came, where that came from, um, and it's a, you know, obviously has something to do with being you know, astrology. Is it something that you guys, uh, you know, um, draw it, um, um, attention from or any inspiration from? Definitely, yeah. yeah. I think we're just both obsessed with like <laughs> cosmic kind of galaxies. You know, when I we go up and look into the stars I just can't fathom how it's even there you know it's like did anyone notice that that's just there and we're all okay with it are we okay with it? Kind of, we don't know how is that okay <laughs> it freaks me out it is but quite... you can look after a while and then you're like you know I don't know if I can be okay with this after a while <laughs> I'm not okay with it it's not going to fall down, that's for sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> probably. Anything otherworldly and kind of mm. other. <laughs> Celestial bodies. For sure. So unique. obviously Coma Wall and Ursa Minor both come from the same thing, yeah. It's definitely something oh. we're both kind of fascinated by mm -hmm. and... And it's inexplicable as well. It's like yeah. we, none of us know what's going on up there. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. Well, are you into flat Earth theory as well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stop. <laughs> um, oh, uh, Dave, David Trave, and um, and uh, uh, Tom, somebody is asking if uh, Coma Wall could speak a little more loudly for them. Um, oh, because easily. I think they've maxed out the volumes on their device. <laughs> Scream at them. Come on, yeah. I know you can. We've been booming so, here, so we're I don't know what's going on with a microphone. Demure, obviously, but <laughs> not coming across. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Sorry. We're actually really loud where we are, so we're always very loud, so we're just holler. <laughs> Sorry. Holler. You have to sit nearer. Sit nearer. Uh, <laughs> Mira, while you're leaning <laughs> forward, somebody just asked, um, somebody just commented and um, back to Orobrot and um, said that they've just got a subscription to Pelagic Records. Is that going to be worth it for them? So, um, but uh, you did do, you did do an Art Tangent, uh, you were part of an Art Tangent stream recently, weren't you, for Art Tangent Festival. Another great festival. We've mentioned Roadburn Festival and Art Tangent Festival. Sure. They're the festivals I go to. I don't care who's on the lineup. I go and I know I'm going to discover my favourite band. So just give them a mention too. But yeah. Would you like to? Uh, were you three? You're part of Art Tangent. Were you going to be on the lineup anyway? It, it, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now I think uh, are they re-announcing it or I'm not sure what's happening. But I guess we are on for 20, 2021. Then if it's happening, yeah. is he? Ex 
be asking if the, the vinyl subscription is going to be worth it. Is that the question? Well, he said, hopefully, no, we didn't quite word it like that. I've got a subscription. Hopefully, it'll, uh, you've got some new Arabrock stuff coming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there's stuff, yeah. stuff, uh, stuff there. It's going to be totally worth it. I, I'm myself uh, still a bit confused about the vinyl subscription part of things because I haven't really done that before. But uh, the new Arabrock record is going to be worth any subscription. Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. I believe, well, I know some labels who just, uh, I've got friends who just subscribe to a label and they get sent a random vinyl every month and they trust the label so much. Oh, yeah. Subscribe to a label. Wow. So it might be something like that. Um, who knows? But I mean, Pelagic are pretty up there. So I would trust them. This is monthly random. Just send me a random vinyl. I, I trust you. So, um, yeah, you've always done stuff independently, haven't you, Cornwall? Am I right in thinking that? Pretty much. We definitely yeah. have some lovely people behind us, but we do do it yeah. ourselves. It's just something that we do. Yeah. Is that like um, a personal choice or is it just the way it works out? Or do you just find it easier to do things on your own terms? In two ways, I think. We just kind of enjoy doing it. So we so we just do it. Yeah, we do like to like just work on our own. But, you know, going forward, we would actually love to start <laughs> collaborating with people. Obviously, we've got Joe and Arabrot and like we love both of those. Uh, we love what they're doing. We'd love to collaborate with them. Um, Somebody's asked for Coma Quail Brot. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> what a name. it's like a monster <laughs> yes what have you made <laughs> <laughs> what have we done you did this all right well uh, oh, right, well, uh, all right so uh, emily would love to, emily would love us to hear the next uh coma wall track so uh why don't we go into that and see the second result of your beautiful time in the hot day in the hot studio yeah cheers to come one two three four Yeah. 
years ago. Oh, we're... oh. Wow, thank you very <laughs> yeah. much. So it's incredible. You... Thank you, Coma Wall. That was gorgeous. Uh, you all just caught us checking uh, the comments there because we're all trying to, <laughs> we're joining in here. We're, we're seeing some people discussing what beer they would enjoy with uh, different music. So some people are talking about, we've got Andrew Marshall saying it's an Imperial Porter, gluten-free 9%. Somebody thinks Odebrock with Deakston's Old Peculiar would work well. I, I don't know. Have you, who's familiar with Deakston's Old Peculiar? I don't know it. I know Old Peculiar. It's an A, isn't it? Yes. It's an A, yeah. Yes. Yes. I feel like I, I feel like you're. I don't know, we should have something more complex than just a simple. I think you more like a bro. sort of special beer, you know, like the Swedish, like the Christmas beers, or or those special small runs where they're like, you know, the Witch of the Blackened Woods beer yeah. or something like that. You know, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> we had our own beer at some point. From, there you go. Um, from then. not not as in brewing our own beer, but yeah, yeah, yeah. someone. Oh. Imagine that. Yeah, I mean, imagine that. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah well, I don't think we're brewing our own beer anytime soon, but no. I like the idea. Yeah. It is. No, it's like I like the idea. Invested in, but I guess I, like other people. It's like in the sludge scene, people have hot sauces named after them, don't they? And things. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's the, what's the, what's the hot sauce? <laughs> yeah. Why? Why hot sauce? That's a thing, isn't it? I'd rather have a hot sauce named after oh, our, actually, really? than, than a beer, yeah. Well. yeah. But, you know, I prefer hot sauce over beer. Oh, okay. Joe, would you rather have a hot sauce or a beer named after you? A wine. Uh, or a tea. A wine. I, yeah. yeah, wine. I would drink red wine and good. listen to your music. Yeah. 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 Definitely. <laughs> I don't know what I mean, chocolate bar. so, um, well... Since, yeah, all right. We've got a little bit off piece there, but that's great. Anyway, thanks for the I interesting. I have crisps uh, after me. What you like? I like crisps. Yeah, what flavour would that be? Don't ask me any questions about this again. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> good. No, that's good. You got to draw a line sometimes, you know, just to make it uh, clear. Yeah. Forever, and we'll move on. So. Um, I, I wanted to um, ask you, Joe, a couple of questions about the next piece that you've um, prepared for us, because this is a very particular piece that was composed for you, if I'm correct, by Venom Prison, Venom Prison, and that was written for you to perform at Damnation Festival, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think they they went ahead and uh, wrote it for me, per se, but they wrote oh. a piece of music and um, is imp uh, uh, implementing metaphysics of morals for solo cello and this was to be an introduction for a solo cello to play at damnation festival and uh we i played uh another very short piece um of devil's enemy for them as well and then we got to do this piece but some technical hitch happened and we we couldn't do it and, and it was taking too long to sort the hitch there was no sound coming out front so there's not enough time to sort it so we we cut it they went into the big song and that was that and I said to, to Ben who'd written it uh, I will record this for you because I it, it was a great piece um, and it, it, it was very exciting to, to work on something like this and to hear how he had approached taking the uh, the, the elements of the song, which basically, uh, you know, this is metal, um, it's, it's hardcore, it's heavy. He put this, condensed this down into this solo cello piece. So uh, it took me a long time, as many things seem to do, but eventually I, I, I made this recording. And um, this is the first piece that I'm, the, this, this piece now that I'm going to present to you. And it's a fabulous piece. It's very, very exciting to play. And it's going to be another one where I think that the interpretation will change and with their blessing i definitely like to include it in, in in sets and concerts but it's particularly good because it's on acoustic cello you see so you yeah. know there's 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 more i could do with exploring the extended techniques on the acoustic cello within this piece but for now this is the piece uh so that's it well, yeah it's, it's incredible also i 
I mean, I was aware of Venom Prison, but I have to admit, I, I hadn't like listened very closely to them until the beginning of this summer, and then I did. Incredible. And I love them. They're yeah. absolutely mind blowing. I love yeah. that band. And then they happened to do a stream uh, last night on yes. uh, Hotel Radio. Who yes. Are, um, uh, I don't know the people personally, but they're a group of people who've been filming and streaming events. Yeah. Basically, for years, and they're yeah. really good at it. And uh, they did Venom Prison in the Dome. Yes. Um, in London, and yeah, it was a they're just amazing. And then I was thinking, how on earth does a band like that write a solo cello piece for Joe Quill? But you've explained that now a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That would be a very, just, very epic intro. It's very, it's just very, very interesting. It just goes to show you cannot, uh, you should never uh, think that uh, one should never think that we we uh, see something, therefore we understand everything. Because there are many, many layers to things, and I think particularly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, for, for me, they're the sort of band that I might not have necessarily gone out and listened to, but I was lucky enough to be invited to play with them. I watched their set and my my earth moved, you know, and, and it was just it was so powerful. Larissa was an incredibly powerful woman as well. And I loved it. So, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan now. So, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, good. me too. And yeah. you doing this has made me a fan of Venom Prison. Good. So, um, good. So uh, thanks for that. And um, after, so, all right, so you've just described how difficult this has been for you to record by yourself with one little mic in your room on acoustic cello, and you tried to interpret Bach and had a very tough time with that. And then you performed this piece and because there were technical issues at Damnation Festival. And then you took a piece that you told me is the hardest piece of music you've ever written. And decided yeah. to apply that to this scenario, which because it wasn't hard enough for you. I just so. would like to clarify. I'm not sort of trying to sound like a burning martyr. You've just happened to pick out probably the four <laughs> things completely out of context <laughs> that I may have said over the last eight months. No, I mean uh, it, well, it's, it's never easy recording anything. You know, I mean it, it, it's not easy to recite a poem, you know, into your computer screen. So. Uh, uh, and I don't feel, I don't mean that, you know, God, it was so hard and I struggled so much. It's just that I'm not very experienced at it. And I'm in this scene, very, very much less known for playing acoustic cello and playing Bach. So that's why I did it. But the Hidden Forest, I mean, if I'd had my uh, my headline tour, then I would have had both cellos with me and my acoustic cello, I would, I would have played uh, Maquette from Exolve and I would have played um definitely the hidden forest definitely between two waves so all it, all of my albums weirdly have uh, an acoustic cello piece on them and I never I didn't do that intentionally it just happens to be and each one that's gone along has got slightly more abstract so so by the time you get to Exolve which is the latest record there's very strange score to tour funny tuning and stuff um and lots of funny double stoppings but this the hidden forest was the first piece I'd ever really written like this, you see. And it's a story of a coastline. It's a story of waves and it's a story of the power of, of that is within the sea and the stones. Um, and from a technical point of view, there's, there's a, a continual left-hand pizzicato that goes throughout, which again, isn't difficult to do, but it is if you don't do it all the time, which I don't. So again, it was, it was a challenge. So that's, that's it really, that's the story. <laughs> But it's, um, no, I'm, yeah, I, 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 I'm sure you enjoyed it and I enjoyed uh, being with you by email throughout it and WhatsApp throughout the summer. And uh, I'm really, really excited to see the uh, results of all the, uh, the um, beautiful efforts over the summer. So <laughs> we're going to hear Joe Quayle with Implementing the Metaphysics of Moral for Solo Cello and uh, The Hidden Forest. So enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, oh, that was wonderful. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Joe. Uh, I want to make it very clear to the audience. We just uh, we had a little uh, technical snafu with the title screens there. So just to be very, very clear, the first piece we heard there by Joe was implementing the metaphysics of morals for cello by Ben in Prison, Ben in Prison, and uh, the second uh, track was the Hidden Forest by Joe Quill. That's one of your own original pieces. That's so right. um, we'll make that clear in the playback. But yes. You can definitely, well, actually, where can people, is there anywhere else people will be able to hear this or buy this stuff? Uh, well, The Hidden Forest is, anyway. is on um, Caldera, uh, which is on Bandcamp. Um, but, Caldera uh, is your third album? A second. Second, second album. album. Yeah, but um, but the Venom Prison track, um, no, uh, it's the, this is the only recording. So I lost. You heard it here first. They everyone. want me to do it. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank That's you good. so much. Thank you. And thank you, Venom Prison, for letting Alain yeah. uh, be played here. And Absolutely. It's great. Uh, you're getting a lot of love from uh, familiar friends. Dead Space Chamber Music and Maud the Moth are commenting with a lot of love. Uh, I'm, we're seeing a lot of people um, speaking about how it's inspiring them to create poetry and create art. And this is probably my favourite aspect of creativity when it inspires other people to go further and that's the point else. of it isn't it though yeah. you know it's yeah, past the baton it. yeah yeah it does it's just uh, creativity begets creativity i think it's really really important and mm. this well especially now people are actually exploring a lot more ideas and, and finding space to do that and and time to be inspired even which is uh, something you've given a lot of people around the world i'd say all of you people all of our guests today uh have Personally, I know people, individuals who have individually been inspired by each of your uh, sounds and gone on to create something else because of what you've done and because of what they've seen and heard from you. So you should be, you're actually creating a lot more than just your own music, I think. And it's really important to point that out. 
So thank you all. So uh, Joe, did you um? So do you have any plans to perform uh, the um, the uh, the Venom Prison piece on a tour by yourself? Would you ever sneak it in anywhere? Could we? Yeah, uh, for sure, for sure. I mean, if you know, mm -hmm. if they with their with their blessing, obviously. But uh, it's, it's a fantastic piece, and and it's it's not it's it's not that uh you have to think about it before you begin it because you want to be sure yeah. that it's got these lovely open fifth and open fourth so you want to be sure they're going to be bang bang in tune because if they are then it's like a big open space is created instantly and then when you come to the fast bits they're pulling it back in and it that's kind of uh a little bit uh well this is a very exciting way of way of playing so you know, I'd, I'd want to be sure that I was very, very prepared before I did it live. I'd like to try it on electric cello as well, actually, just to see how that felt. Um, that but yeah, cool. I mean, if I ever do a gig, you know, ever, then I'll, I'll, I'd love to play that piece. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> no, I'm we, joking. We're all, yes, doing I'm gigs again. <laughs> we're all going to be in a big, sweaty room together. <laughs> being blown away by each other's creativity. I just, you know, Ruben made me laugh because he said that that uh, when when everything first went into lockdown, he said, "Well, they have to throw away the one cloth that has been cleaning all of the Camden pubs and clubs over the last twenty oh. years, because everywhere you go <laughs> smells the same." You know, <laughs> well, one know, cloth. I don't know. Um, maybe that cloth will still be floating around. It could be um, like a relic, you know. Might, you, might, you might be glad to you might be glad to smell it when you go back. I will. I, I miss it. I miss it very much. <laughs> I um yeah, I mean uh, we are all going to be doing a lot of live events going forward in various ways. Uh, we're gonna get creative about it. Um, you've all come up with a lot of ideas. Joe, you've actually, as always, throughout the history of Chaos Theory, given us a few little nuggets of inspiration to <laughs> about what we could be doing um and yeah i just want to reiterate to everyone that this is something we're doing to continue to enjoy sharing music art and creativity and promote but we do really 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 hope and look forward to uh being in a room with all of our loveliest people and loveliest favorite strangers that we've never met before and with our favorite artists all working together and enjoying it together and just getting uh, you know moved in the crowd uh, by whatever we're witnessing so that's something that is going to come up and uh, in the meantime all of these musicians are going to be writing and producing Joe, Orobra, Comewall have all been putting stuff out they've all got a lot of ideas we need you to make sure that they're in a position to be touring whenever that is possible so the only thing we can possibly do right now is to buy their music and keep funding them and just keep them holding on so you know they don't all go and get a data entry job somewhere and uh so um so uh you know which obviously everyone's dying to do so uh if you click on the link for all the band camp um yeah the, the band camp pages that we put in the information on this uh youtube description you can just go to town and pay what pay, uh, you know just buy everything buy everything several times <laughs> if you've only got one record Thank yeah, several times. Buy us a minor EP several times, and just, uh, just um, there's a relationship that I think a lot of people have been really uh, understanding a lot more between the consumer and uh, the thing that they want. The people going crazy about pubs. Well, it's the same with artists. We've already understood this for a while, but it's really important right now. So just keep spending money on them, keep feeding them your love, and um, just make sure that we're all in a position to be back on gigs, tours, festivals, everything as soon as that's possible because that's really what we want to be doing. So, um, yeah, Victoria, this is your first time on the Chaos Theory Show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. How, you Thanks, guys. Well, <laughs> actually, it's all of your first time on the Chaos Theory Show. So, Oliver, oh, thank yeah. you very much, Carolina yeah. and Kieta. Thank, <laughs> thank you for Karen having Karen us. From thank you, Victoria. Mm. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And Joe, thank you. for. I think a little bit of this uh, whole show concept is your idea, a little bit. Oh. I'm pretty sure you uh, you said to me, Chaos Theory does curation. Why would you do this one artist at a time? And I was uh, like, well, I, I, yeah, why would we? Well, you know, it was your it was thank you to you for setting this whole thing up because I know that you put a hell of a lot of work into figuring out how to do this and how to run this concept with different artists and you know and and everybody who's put the time in to make these these beautiful videos as well that we saw on the last one on on this one i mean it's been incredible hasn't it so 
good for you for um, making us all do it. <laughs> like, well, thank you. And we've got to really uh, give credit to Emily Bailey Visuals. Yes, again. Emily, Emily Bailey, Bailey, we love you. Yeah, very much. On the phone, constantly in my ear. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> thank you, Emily. Okay, thank you for helping her, you presenting her. Uh, we, and we always throw even even 10 minutes before the show we're throwing last minute stuff at Emily to sort out so and she handles it like a pro like having so, goblets for the toasting yeah the goblets, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah providing yeah. goblets had we goblets. known we would have been but yeah. every day is goblet day that's my fault that's yeah. my fault as a host uh, I should have prepared you better with a goblet but thank you everyone we've got yeah. goblets so. I that really quiet all the way for now <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to get Chieto to find a few uh, skulls which have not got too many cracks in them and send them over for us to drink out of for the next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, well, I, have one, I, have, uh, I have this from Bridget and I laughed, Joe. Uh, and she gave me this and I can drink out of this. So we're already, we're already ahead of the game. So, um, right. Uh, Anyone got any, any of you artists, you've been absolutely amazing. Have you got any other, anything that we need to be hearing about? The fans who just don't know who you are, but really want to know about you. Is there some useful, essential, essential piece of info that you can give them about what's coming up, what we can look forward to, or, or that we haven't mentioned? <laughs> well, I can say that uh, it's very good if you buy our records because we were for a while thinking about starting a day job as a funeral agency, me and Gietil, but I think uh, if you buy our records, we don't have to do that. So that would be very nice. <laughs> so please. Would uh, the music come included in the service? Yeah. <laughs> Put it, yeah, yeah, then, yeah. Hey, then I'd be into that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank everyone, you. I want to thank you so, so, so much for joining us. And, and everybody. Thanks, everyone. Everyone, you've been amazing. Thanks for watching us. We're going to put this up on our YouTube channel for playback at some point. So just subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the little bell and hit all, and then you'll hear about every show that's coming up. And when this is published, you'll be the first to hear about it. So love you lots. And we will be in a room together enjoying music soon. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye.